we're always yeah. in situations where we make assumptions. Uh, there isn't anyone who doesn't make assumptions. We have to for survival. You know, we have to assume how fast a car's travelling and where it's going to be in a period of time. So if you're going to cross the road, you have to assume, right, that car looks like it's travelling at this speed and I think it's going to arrive... You don't think this consciously, but you have to make that decision. I think it's going to arrive here in 40 seconds. So that gives me... It takes me 30 seconds to cross the road. That gives me 10 seconds leeway. So that's safe to cross. So I'm going to cross now. So you don't obviously do that consciously, you just look left and right and then you make that decision without realising you've made the assumption, right, this is a safe time to cross. But you have to go through a process like that and everything we do is based on assumptions. But the downside is some people make assumptions over things and act on them a bit prematurely. So when you make an assumption and it's the correct assumption, you've got, you know, you've got the correct assumption so you act on it then, well that's one thing. But if you make an assumption, like for example, I um, I watched The Mentalist, which is a TV series, and how The Mentalist show works is that there's normally some kind of a murder that happens before the title scenes come up, before the music starts and the title arrives. And I normally, in most episodes, know what happened from seeing the murder scene and from working it out before the music com comes up. I normally watch it and think, right, I know who the killer is, yes. I know what happened and what it was about. Mm. Yes. And in most episodes, I know that. And then I fast forward all the way to the end, uh, because if I know it, I don't need to watch it, and then uh, see when the conclusion gets revealed, whether I was right or not. Now, obviously, sometimes my assumption has been wrong. So as I'm fast forwarding through, I'll fast forward so I can see the screen. I don't just fast forward it with it off the screen. And I can see that actually, oh, that looks new. So I'll play it and I'll see something that may change my opinion. And I think that's the thing. Erickson used to teach that a way for therapists to train is you should read the last page of a book and think of all the ways that the story could have started and what the story is that leads to that outcome. Then read the second to last page and cross off every idea that was wrong and come up with any new ideas based on the second page and then keep working your way back through the book until you manage to get it right, even though you've perhaps not read a chunk of the book. So it could be, say, halfway back through the book, you suddenly finally have clicked it, and you know it, and you've got it, and it's all right. So that's a way of practicing improving your observation skills to improve your assumptions, but you're still making assumptions, but you're checking out the evidence all the time. And when I teach therapy, uh, I always point out not to jump to assumptions. Have an assumption in your mind, that's fine. You know, have a hypothesis. That's scientists do it all the time. You oh, think, yeah. right? What is? Why does this happen? You know, why do plants grow in this way, or why do planets go around each other around the sun in that way? Or people then come up with, well, here's a bunch of reasons why that might be the case. Here's what we think, and then they go out there and test it. They look for evidence for it and evidence against it because they want to see if they can break that assumption. Yes. So if they can disprove that what they've come up with is correct, yeah. that teaches them more yeah. than just oh, justifying yeah. what's correct. Mm -hmm. So if you sat there with your arms crossed, mm -hmm. I could think, oh, he's obviously not really wanting to listen to what I've got to say, to the information I'm trying to impart on him. And I could then look for evidence to support that assumption. Yes. So uh, I might notice, factor, yeah, yes. so I might yeah. then notice, um, oh, he's shaking his head. That means that he's obviously definitely not um, not listening, not interested in what I've got to say. But the shaking of the head and the crossing of the arms might be unrelated. But because I'm looking for things to back up my assumption, I'm very likely to find them. I'm very likely to find all my links that prove my opinion. Yeah, that which is what people do all the time. The people yes. do that yes. Uh, yes. in. Yeah. religion or other beliefs that's right yes. people yeah. look for things that evidence their belief instead yeah. of things that go against we their confirm belief their, their belief. whereas yes. yeah. my way if i saw you crossing your arms and perhaps looking disinterested i would find a way of getting you to uncross your arms and i would talk about other things yes. so i perhaps one thing i could do is say to you um yeah, so what's your favorite sport or what's your favorite hobby or what's your favorite whatever it is get you to talk about that then i would show a lot of interest in what you're now telling me 
and because you're talking about something really interesting, you shouldn't be having your arms crossed no, no, of if it was linked to whether you're yes. interested or not. You should now yes. be thinking, oh, I'm really happy to talk about this, and you yeah. should change your posture. Change posture. Yeah. And if I can get you to change your posture, I can then go back to talking yeah. about what I was talking about before and see if you go back to yes. the same yes. way. Yes. So it's, does this yeah. pattern repeat itself under the same circumstances yeah. Yeah. or not? Yeah. And, and it is about always checking things out. We yeah. all use words like I nominalizations in hypnosis are all about assumptions yeah so i could say um so you've come here today to listen to what i've got to say and to hear the words that i'm saying and to learn something new that you've always wanted to know yeah and you've always wanted to know what it is that i'm about to say but you don't yet know what it is and i can talk saying yeah. stuff that sounds totally you know meaningful to you but actually there's no meaning there's only meaning based around what you're creating in your own head. Yes. So you think, yeah, I have come here to listen to you, I have come here to learn this. And, um, so I could say, um, you know, when you close your eyes, you're gonna have a deeply relaxing experience. And your deeply relaxing experience would be totally different to mine. If I closed my eyes and had a deeply relaxing experience, and I described it, so you said to me, right, tell me in detail what relaxing experience you just had and what about it made it relaxing. I would tell you totally different things to what you tell me. But the words were the same. Close your eyes and have a deeply relaxing experience. And I could say that to a room full of people. Oh, yeah. And mm. they would all interpret it in their own way based on assumptions. Yeah. Mm. And they wouldn't question it. No. They no. would accept the assumptions they're making. Yes. They would accept their assumption is right. They understand fully what I mean. And, mm. and so we do it all the time. But it, mm. I do teach that you shouldn't have, um, you shouldn't, necessarily vocalize your assumptions so for example I could think oh he's had a problem with his dad or oh he's had a problem with his uncle or oh he's had a problem with his mum or mm. I can have that thought in my head based yes. on what's coming yes. up yeah. but I don't have to share that mm. it could be for example um, I could be showing you something that's upsetting to you or talking about something that's upsetting to you but you know why I'm doing it you know why I've got to do it and so you're comfortable with being upset someone else in the room might say how dare he do that how dare yeah. he make that person uncomfortable mm. like that does he not realize that what he's doing is upsetting them mm. yeah but actually if you are okay with this and i've said to you perhaps out of earshot of that other person yeah. that observer yeah. um, i'm going to have to bring this up mm. are you okay with me doing that and you say it'll probably upset me but yeah i'm okay with that i know that you yeah, know that yeah, but they don't know that yeah. so their perception is they yeah. make the assumption that i'm doing something really bad and wrong and but actually I'm not, I'm doing something that you're aware of and I'm aware of and just because they're not aware of it doesn't mean it's wrong and it's down to them to perhaps say Terry are you okay, it looks like it's upsetting you and then you say and then yes, yeah, yes yeah I'm okay with yeah, this, I knew it would be upsetting they're, yeah, they're I knew it would be upsetting yes. uh, I, I said that yes. I, this, you know, yes. I was aware this was going to happen I said I was okay with that and then they can say oh, okay then and then we carry on yeah. and so yeah. they've had an assumption, questioned it checked it out and checked it out and that that's the most important thing to, ch mm. to check out these assumptions isn't it